Hey everybody, it's Andrew here with my Mac Mini review, and I have a little bit of a different setup since the live unboxing. Of course, this is the Mac Mini M4 Pro. This costs $13.99. I'll leave links for everything in the description below, but this, of course, is the higher end or the entry level of the higher end. 24 gigabytes of unified memory, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. I think most people don't need this. They can go with the entry level model, get some external storage, and save a lot of money. That comes in at $599, and I wouldn't go for the upgrades because those are very expensive from Apple. So again, get an external drive like the Samsung T9. But that being said, this has been a very good solution so far in the last few days that I've been really putting it through its paces. Uh, one of the reasons I went with this particular model is the Thunderbolt 5 ports that it has on the back. It has three of them, two more USB-C ports on the front. They're not Thunderbolt 5. You get a headphone jack and, of course, uh, really, really a tiny form factor here it does feel a little bit dense and it does have some excellent build quality but you're not going to be picking it up all that much i know there's been a lot of brouhaha regarding the power button being on the bottom uh it's not a big issue you can just lift it up and turn it on if you have to or turn it off if you have to but overall that has not really been an issue for me now monitor setup that i have here i have a 17.3 inch monitor from Uperfect. I did a video on it. It's a portable 17.3 inch and it's been great. It's got a 4K resolution. That's connected to one of the Thunderbolt 5 ports. And then this monitor here is a portable monitor I've had for a few years from Dell. Very lightweight, very easy, has got a built-in stand here. Uh, this one is, a, I think, a 13-inch or so. Uh, pretty good also, so I've got two monitors there. Now, I'll show you in a little bit uh, how I use my iPad Pro 11 here through Sidecar, giving a third monitor. So it's been a pretty good setup here for as far as how I do my workflow. But uh, let me know what you think about it. And of course, everybody's setup is a little bit different. Now, the Uperfect is standing on a monitor uh, stand on here that I had lying around. It's a really robust metal stand. I don't remember where I got it, to be honest. I think it was it came with that dual monitor I did from LaPau. So check out that video, <clears throat> excuse me. And they, they sent that over. I don't know if it's standard with it or not. But anyway, I connected the Magic Keyboard that I've had for years here. It's that compact one. And then of course I have my original MX mouse that I love from Logitech. So I didn't have to put in anything really for the accessories. I've had enough here in the studio to get up and running. So again, if you caught that live unboxing, I was able to do the setup and everything. So I'll leave a link to that video or replay in the description below. Now, that being said, one of the biggest improvements I've seen so far with this Mac Mini is the video editing. And one of the reasons I chose this is to see if it could replace my Mac Studio with the M1 Max. Now that of course came out a couple of years ago, but it has a few more GPU cores. I think eight more GPU cores on the one I have. It's off camera here, but that's been my main setup in my studio to do this live stream or not do a live stream. I'm not live streaming now, but uh, to do some recorded video as well, but that has been a workhorse. But one of the biggest surprises to me was how much better this was in terms of rendering and exporting an 18 minute 4K video in Final Cut Pro. This was a big, pretty big uh, deal to me because this saved me more than ha almost half the time to render and export that video over that Mac studio that I have with the M1 Mac. So it's been very good. Now, gaming is not going to be uh, what you're gonna buy this for, but I was able to connect my Xbox controller via Bluetooth. I can do some cloud gaming with the uh, Game Pass from Xbox. I have the Ultimate, so you got a lot of titles you can choose from. Just make sure you have a good internet connection. We'll show that in a little bit. And then of course, uh, you have this setup, and I think it's worked out pretty well. So I'm seeing a big gain in terms of video editing. Now, you do sacrifice a few things on the Mac Studio, well, the Mac uh, Mini that I have here over the Mac Studio that I have. So one of the things is you lose the SD card reader. Maybe it's not a big deal, but I liked having it on the front. Here you don't get one. You'll have to use a dongle or an adapter. So that's one little negative. And there are a couple other things, but the form factor is basically a shrunken down Mac Studio. It's a big difference in terms of the footprint. So it takes up less space on your desk. So you have more room to put other things and so forth, give it a cleaner look as well. So overall, this has been a great solution. So let's get into why I think the Mac Mini M4 Pro is great for those that want to get work done and not take up a lot of space on your desk in terms of what uh, the footprint is. So let's get into it and why I think this is an excellent outing here from Apple, a big, big improvement with this mini, mini PC really, right? So let's get into it now. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro here for 2024 coming up. So we have the pull tabs here. 
So that is, of course, they make it easy, sort of. And as you can see here, I have the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro. And that, of course, gives you those Thunderbolt 5 ports. Let's get this out of the box here. So there she is, or it is, or he is, or whatever. And it has a little bit of heft here. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this has a little bit of heft. Uh, so it doesn't feel cheap in any way. In fact, it feels like a, a very miniaturized version of the Mac Studio, to be honest. It feels dense. And I think because it's going to the smaller form factor, the smaller footprint, you're going to get a more densely feeling device. Now, the, of course, this is uh, looking pretty nice in terms of the build. I could have done that more elegantly, but whatever. So this is the bottom, and of course, everybody's all up in arms over this. The power button being on the um, bottom of the unit, but this is the air intake system, I guess. So it's where it's going to draw on the air to cool the system down. Um, on the front here, you can see the two uh, USB-C ports. I believe they're standard USB-C, and this is a headphone jack there. On the back is the three Thunderbolt 5 ports right there. You also get your HDMI, your gigabit. I didn't go for the the enhanced gigabit or whatever they're offering. That's I think that's extra money if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, but we'll look into that. And then there's your power port. And then, of course, uh, there it is. That's how f small and light it is. And then, of course, uh, you get a black braided cable here. And it looks like uh, there's your power cord there. So... Let's uh, remove this, and then I can plug it in. I'm trying to do it nicely. And there she is. And it's a braided cable. It seems pretty long. Um, maybe it should be a little bit longer. I don't know. Okay, this is going to be ready to be plugged in. So let's just leave that there off to the side. But we'll get our measurement of the weight first. All right, so let's bring out the scale. Let's just see how much it weighs, right? So just out of curiosity. All right, with just the unit alone, it's a uh, 0. 732 kilograms or 732 grams and that is one pound 9.8 ounces okay let's talk performance here and whether you go with the entry level m4 or go with the m4 pro like i did you're going to get excellent single core and multi-core performance case in point check out the geekbench 6 results single core on the mac mini m4 3889 and on the m4 pro 4005 where you're going to see the benefit of getting those extra cores as the m4 pro is of course with multi-core that's 14,914 for the m4 but then you bump up to 23,000 on the M4 Pro. So a big gain there, and that's one of the reasons I chose the M4 Pro, but I think most people don't need to do that. They will be perfectly fine with the entry-level model. Now take the Cinebench 2024 results here. Excellent single and multi-core once again. Mac Mini M4 161, that is excellent, and of course the M4 Pro 166, but the big difference is going to be the multi-core 833 versus 1622, so pretty much double the multi-core performance, and that's going to be good for things that really rendering video and stuff like that that's going to help out with multi-core performance exactly how it sounds and that's exactly what you're going to get out of this very good performance both single and multi-core whether you go with the m4 or the m4 pro now, one of the reasons I wanted to move from the Mac Studio M1 Max to the Mac Mini M4 Pro, not only for taking up less space because of the smaller footprint, the smaller form factor, but because of the results here. Check this out. My 18-minute 4K video export and render in Final Cut Pro with the very complicated transitions and effects that's not easy to do, of course, was really done well here. Now, put aside the MacBook Pro 16 M4 Max that I did, which did a fantastic 5 minutes, 29 seconds. Seconds. That was 165% faster than my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max from last year. But look at the Mac Mini M4 Pro with that same video, 8 minutes, 34 seconds. That's that bad, really. It's incredible. And when you look at how long it took my Mac Studio M1 Max, which has eight more GPU cores, 16 minutes and 2 seconds. So you're looking at almost half the time to render and export that video. That is a game changer, especially for somebody like me, where time is money. 
money. So this is very much appreciated here. And one of the main reasons I'm going to switch over. Now, as far as DaVinci Resolve, as you can see, it handled its own in terms of the overall score, 8280 and the basic score, 7067 standard. And when you compare it to the more powerful M4 Max on that MacBook Pro 16 that I just reviewed, you can see this is not that far off in terms of the video performance when it comes to video rendering and stuff like that in DaVinci Resolve. Very impressive here for this Mac Mini with the M4 Pro. So when it comes to gaming on the Mac Mini here, I'm using cloud gaming with the Xbox Live Ultimate or whatever, Game Pass, whatever the hell they're calling it. I think it's $20 a month, and it gives you a pretty good fair amount of games you can play online. As long as you have a fast connection with low latency, you have an Xbox controller. This certainly will help wirelessly, of course. And uh, this is uh, Forza Horizon 5 that I'm playing, and it's going through the initial setup screen and all that stuff, but it's playable, and it does very well. Now, native gaming on the Mac is getting better. They've had some native titles that are coming or out already. No Man's Sky is one of them. I think Baldur's Gate is another. So you can play native games, and they play really great. Uh, now, no issue. Again, I haven't tested it yet on this one, but I think overall cloud gaming may be a good solution for those that want more of the popular titles and so forth, and they want to be able to play some games. So this will do it, of course. Uh, you can see here, you can go through the menus and all that stuff. I'm using the bottom screen so you can see it a little bit better, but you can maybe even see it here. But the bottom line is this is basically the uh, best case scenario in terms of gaming. Now, as far as coming titles, we know that the Cyberpunk 2077 is coming in 2025 and they're going to be able to uh, bring that uh, to, to natively to the Mac. So that's coming. Not here yet. So there are some third-party solutions, but I would think gaming is not the reason you're going to buy something like this. There are better Windows alternatives out there that will play many more games, have no issues, and you'll have a better experience. So I think that is pretty much um, where you're going to be on this. So that there you go. So I'm going to select the uh, Corvette here, and let's get to the play the game here and while i'm playing the game of course uh, this is basically been a good experience now the speaker out of the mac mini has been surprisingly good you can maybe hear it in the background here uh improved speaker definitely louder and a little bit more fidelity but again i would add good pair of uh speakers of course will make it an even better experience you do have a headphone jack on the front of it and you could also connect via bluetooth so there are a few options when it comes to the audio now there is a little bit of lag here because i am uh, in my studio here. Not the greatest internet. I probably connect via Ethernet would be better, so less latency and a better speed. But this is via Wi-Fi, and it's actually doing okay. So very playable. I mean, there is a little bit of lag here and there. You might have noticed a few jittery actions there. But again, this is cloud gaming, so just keep that in mind. Now, one of the issues people had with the entry-level 256-gig SSD from years past was the very slow reads and writes. So that's not the case here, at least with the 512 gigabytes that I have here with this M4 Pro Mac Mini. As you can see, very good reads and writes in terms of that SSD. Now, iFixit did a teardown, and I'll link in the description below to their video so you can check it out. And lo and behold, you can replace the SSD or the storage here, although it's not for the faint of heart getting inside of it. So you just have to be very careful, follow their instructions. But they gave it a 7 out of 10 in terms of serviceability, which for Apple product is really good. So again, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Now, when it comes to the thermals, the surface temperatures never get overly hot. They stay relatively cool, although you'll never be picking it up all that much, so not a big deal. But the biggest thing here, I still haven't heard the fans on this thing. Is there a fan inside? I'm sure there is. I just haven't heard it yet. All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the M4 Mac Mini here for 2024? And this is impressive because the Mac Mini preserves most of the benefits of a larger design in a much smaller form factor, a smaller footprint. Thanks to the 16 gigabytes of RAM you get in the 599 model, it's an easy recommendation to anyone who wants an entry-level Mac. The impressive performance is simply off the charts relative to what you're paying, $599. And I think 99% of you, most of you, should be looking at that model. Don't look at the Pro model that I have because it's really overkill for a lot of you. Now, I have my specific needs with video editing. I needed the GPU cores, and I also wanted those Thunderbolt 5 just to show you what uh, it's capable of. But of course, I don't have any Thunderbolt 5 peripherals or accessories, so that will be coming down the road, but it's a little bit more future-proof. Now, Apple Silicon continues to impress whether you're talking about the M4 or the M4 Pro. I like the fact that you're no longer getting 
getting that paltry 8 gigabytes in that entry model in terms of the memory. It's bumped up to 16, and if you go with the model that I have, it's 24 gigabytes, so that's even impressive right there. Uh, you got support for three external displays on both models, no matter which one you go with. I added two via the two Thunderbolt 4 ports. I also added a sidecar through my iPad Pro, so that added that third monitor for me, but you are you can add another third with plugging it into that Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5 port or Thunderbolt 4, depending on which model you go with. Having some front-mounted ports is very convenient, although the one big one here missing is the SD card reader, the one that I had on the Mac Studio. I don't have that here. That's the one thing you lose. You also lose the USB-A ports. You get fewer Thunderbolt ports on the back of the M4 Pro model relative to the 2018 Intel or the M2 Pro Mac Mini, so just keep that in mind. Storage and RAM options remain very costly with no real options for an aftermarket upgrade, although I've seen some teardown, so you may want to risk it. I don't know. Maybe you can upgrade it. Who knows? High power mode on the M4 Pro version really doesn't do a whole lot, to be honest with you, so not sure why it's there, but if you want to use it, you can. I didn't see a big difference in terms of the numbers. Uh, and of course, the power button is on the bottom. Maybe any people have been clamoring how that is a bad design choice. I didn't really care. It didn't bother me all that much. I don't use it all that much. I put it to sleep, and that's pretty much been the case with my Mac Studio as well, so not a big deal that the power button's on the bottom. But overall, I think Apple has come out here, hit swung for the fences and hit a grand slam. I think they did a fantastic job from price to performance ratio on that 599 model and I like the fact that if you want to bump up to the pro level model, you have that option, although that remains very costly and their upgrades just are atrocious in terms of the price. But that being said, this has been fantastic and it looks like I'm going to be replacing my Mac Studio with the M1 Max here with this uh, mini over here. So it's going to take up less space. I do sacrifice a few things, but overall the performance gains I get will out weigh any of the negatives and i think overall this has been a great choice here for 2024 and i highly recommend the m4 mac mini here for 2024